had 60 fruit trees there before I even built a house. So you can see all the little persimmons that's forming on them. There's nothing sweeter than these Asian pears. Something in the soil that affects them, they give it that disease they call Texas root rot, and then your trees end up dying. You know? When I bought this place, it was real cheap, you know. You pay like $120 a year for use of water, no limit. There's two types, one's astringent and one's non-astringent. My name is Fred Wong and uh, I used to be in the restaurant business for many years up in Flagstaff. Then I bought the place down here and uh, did a little farming and enjoyed it, so that's what I do now. This right here is just the shot of my backyard. I just threw a few uh, tomato plants in that I started, mostly cherry tomatoes here. I keep the plastic on there to keep the weeds down, but the weed's gonna grow where there's no plastic, so I haven't had a chance to weed it yet. Yeah, tomatoes grow good up in this climate here. Then this in the back here is my main orchard here. I got probably 50 trees back here. You can tell from the size of these trees, these are planted quite a few years ago. Some of them I have already here, 30 years. And some of these persimmon trees and some of these uh, plum trees, they're at least 20, 25 years old. I started with my dad. They had a restaurant up in Flagstaff and that restaurant opened for 74 years. So they started back in the early 40s. So I grew up in the restaurant business and knew how hard work was, you know. I mean, you know, you go in early in the morning, you come out at night, you know, you peel potatoes, and you wash dishes, you do a little bit of everything, you know. Then I picked up farming and I did that on the side on the weekends, you know. So on I'd have one day off, I'd come down here to Camp Verde and tend my garden and everything. And all the time after that, I said, shoot, one of these days I'm gonna have me a, a place where I can grow a bunch of fruit trees and have my friends come and, and pick fruit, you know. I had 60 fruit trees there before I even built a house, so the trees were started growing already and uh, irrigation was working and then I bought another lot across the highway and planted it and uh, just little by little, you know, got more tractors, more equipment, you know, try to make work a little bit easier. This is the one acre, the one across the street is another acre and a quarter, and the other one is an acre, probably three and a quarter acre. That's way too much. <laughs> These are my Asian pears. I don't know if you ever eat Asian pears, but when these things are ripe, you come up here and you pick them when they're ripe off the trees. And I got about probably five different varieties of them scattered through here. And I grafted a bunch of different ones on a bunch of different trees. So one tree will have two or three varieties, you know. There's certain lots up here in Camp Verde, which this is one of them, this whole subdivision. When you bought them, they were acre lots and they had irrigation already plumbed into it. And what it is, is it's fed by gravity off of a ditch above me a little ways. And it's fed by the Verde River. They shut the ditch around November and then they open back up in March, you know, for maintenance. But yeah, it's nice to have irrigation. So when I water, I just flood the whole place, you know, turn on the valve and that's all you do. It's nice, you know, to have irrigation. So I just looked around and when I bought this place, it was real cheap, you know. Now you can't even find a lot that has irrigation. They're all bought up, you know. If you would have bought earlier, I bought in 92 and there was still a lot of lots left, you know, but now it's getting scarce now. Most of this town is fed by different ditches that were grandfathered in. So, 
people water their grass, you know, right now there's no restriction because the river's up high, but later on in the summer when the drought comes, you know, they're restricted to only once or twice a week they can water. Everybody waters. They flood their yard until it looks like a lake, you know, and then, you know, if it wasn't for water, nothing's green, you know. So that's one of the reasons it's so green here. There's just so much water that comes through here, you know. These are thorn wild blackberries. This guy started this bush right here from one stick he cut across the street. He just stuck it in the ground and it took, and now it's wrapped all the way around here. And there's so many blackberries on there and they're all ripe. You can't even keep up with picking them. And uh, they are delicious. They say that uh, thorn ones actually taste better than the thornless, but boy, they stick you on the side sometimes. When they get ripe, they'll start turning. For instance, this one right here is half red, half black, and they taste okay, but they don't taste as sweet as the black ones, you know. These trees aren't cheap, man. They're, they're like $50 a tree, you know, just a little twig, you know, but when I bought them long time ago, they were $30 bare root, and that's where I started, and, you know, 20, 30 years ago. So I planted a few of them, and, uh, they took off and I just kept planting more of them. <laughs> so I, all together, I probably got close to 20, I bet you. Once I started planting, you know, and I saw how they grew and how they produced, you know, it just one after another. And before I know it, man, I got 120 plus trees, you know. But it's, it's worth it in the long run, you know. Some die and then you replace it. And then the ones that you replace you don't even notice that they're there, and then pretty soon they're already grown, you know. But they're all good if you like fruit, you know. Peaches are good when they're ripe, you know, but the Oriental people, they like persimmons, you know, and uh, when they're at the market, people enjoy them, and you know, not only Orientals, a lot of people like it, and a lot of people don't even know what a persimmon is, you know, but they'll bite into it and they say it's good. Some people don't like it, you know, just a matter of taste, you know. There's my flock of chickens. <laughs> I started out with 26 of them. One of them was a rooster. I got rid of it. And then uh, I bought them as chicks and they all grew up. And then I think I got 22 of them. One died and then two of them, I forgot to put them in at nighttime. And I think a raccoon killed two of them. But I let them free range out here, you know. I'll just turn them loose and they'll come out and they'll just eat. Then at nighttime, they just go back in, you know, right before dark or if they're hungry, they just follow me in because I take some food in, but they'll go out and they'll just eat bugs and everything, you know. This is the nest boxes here. They usually lay in the morning, you know, this is a brown egg, you know. On the average, they lay anywhere from 14 to 16 eggs a day. And uh, usually they lay in the morning, so I don't even get them until in, the, until in the afternoons I get them. People at the market, you know, the rate of inflation, you, you gotta raise your prices, you know, but when you raise prices, people, they don't understand, you know, that so much work is involved and so much material costs so much. And then when you raise it, they complain, you know. I remember when I first started Farmer's Market, I was selling vine-ripe tomatoes for $2 a pound, you know, and then it went up to three, and then three and a half, four, you know, now it's probably four and a half. And other people sell them $5 a pound, you know. You're gonna get what you pay, you know. You pay more, you get the right stuff, you know, that's vine-ripe, you know, organic. It's fun, but sometimes fun turns into hard work, and sometimes, you wonder if it's worth it. <laughs> this tree here is grafted, and it's probably got five different kind of pears on it. You can tell, see, these are like Bartlett pears here on the same tree. And then you have your round one, which is some Asian pears. And then I have some that I grafted, and, and they're the lighter ones like this one is called a lolly. 
you can't find this tree anymore, but I had one over in Cornville when I first started my orchard over there. They're just pear-shaped Asian pears. And uh, those lollies has got to be one of the best ones you ever tasted. Hardest part is pruning them, watering them, you know. I've been pretty lucky back in this section here. Hardly any of my trees died, but on the other side of my lot across the highway, the trees over there, some of them are big and every so often there are quite a few of them die. They have what they call Texas root rot. And uh, that's where mesquite trees used to grow. And if there was mesquites there and then there's a something in the soil that affects them, they give it that disease they call Texas root rot, and then your trees end up dying, you know. So all you can do is just cut them down and plant another one. But I have so many trees, I plant a young one, I don't miss it. And then before you know it, it's big again, you know. You put hard work into it, take care of your fruits and vegetables, you'll get a reward, you know. But if you put it in and if you don't, take care of it and then you try to let it survive on its own you know it's not gonna make it you know I mean you got to take care of the stuff that you plant you know a lot of these people they plant these trees and they think you know they're gonna get fruit just like that you know but trees gotta go two or three years before they get fruit and then you know in the meantime but you know two or three years you gotta fertilize it you gotta you gotta water it and then you gotta prune it and just take care of it, you know. There's a lot of diseases it could get, bugs that eat on the leaves and everything, you know. So it's a little bit more work than you think it is, but in the long run, it's worth it. Everything, you know, comes out okay, you know. When the fruit ripes, you know, and you let some people have it and they take a bite into a peach and they just say, oh my God, this is just so delicious, you know. And this is where I store all my fruits and vegetables. I built it, insulated it and everything. And then all you do is just buy you a, a high dollar air condition unit. And then they have a cool bot system that overrides that when I get a bunch of fruit, you know, and I can't sell it or something. I just put it in here and keep it cool, you know. On a good year, on a peach tree you can get god you can't believe it i bet you anywhere from 500 to a thousand pounds that's just peaches plums you know when they're loaded they're just as much you know they're there's so much they break your branches you know and everything else you know a lot of times you plant too much you know and then you got too much crop and then it doesn't sell all and then you get behind on it because there's so much to take care of, weeding and everything, picking. I mean, it's just one thing after another, you know. If you bite off more than you can chew, you're gonna end up regretting it, you know. I have three hives of bees. It makes a difference when you have a beehive, you know, especially when your fruit trees are blooming. This is where I start my sweet potatoes. You know, you buy a sweet potato, then you just put it in dirt and just keep it moist. They'll send up uh, uh, these things, like what they call slips. And when you buy these slips, they're like two or three dollars a slip, you know, and all you do is stick them in, in the dirt in your garden. And then over the summer, it'll produce a big sweet potato for you. These are the purple ones, so they're a little bit more expensive ones, you know. I think it's healthier, you know. You know what goes into the food, and you know that you grew it yourself, you know. There's no other stuff, you know, that you don't know about. The stuff you get in the store, you know, they say you need to wash it, you know, and this and that, you know. No, don't tell me what kind of stuff they spray on it, you know. All my fruits, you know, I don't even spray or nothing. I don't even, birds want it, they can have it, you know. There's plenty. <laughs> this here is my blackberry patch. I think I started with like six little plants and uh, they just keep sending runners out and they just keep getting bigger, you know. 
there's a whole bunch of berries on there, but they're they're just now starting to get ripe, you know. They're red to begin with, and then when they get ripe, they turn black, you know. They're sweet though, you know. Just start your own garden, you know, start with a few trees, you know, and take care of them. If they survive, you know, you can always plant some more, you know. It's fun in a way, you know, it's worth it, you know. I'd like to see more people do their own garden, you know, maybe grow their own food, you know. When you grow your own food, there's a reward, you know, accomplishment that you won't get otherwise, you know. It's, you can always go to the store and buy stuff, you know. Maybe the store's okay for some people, but the people that grow stuff and they have good crop of fruits and vegetable, it's rewarding in a lot of ways, you know. It tastes better and uh, something you can think back and say, I did it myself, you know. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy our documentaries as much as we enjoy making them. Unfortunately, many of our videos don't earn enough YouTube revenue to afford the cost of production. But if you like our content, the best thing you can do is directly support it on Patreon. Plus, you'll get access to behind the scenes vlogs and commentary. If you're looking for something more in return, go to paragraphic.io where you can buy our other products and services. Alternatively, you can shop our Amazon storefront for our favorite equipment recommendations. Also, check out Boca where you can find beneficial supplements to optimize your productivity. We especially love the lion's mane and mushroom gummies. And finally, consider signing up to Multitude, a platform built for long form content where you and other content creators can share and monetize new videos every week.